Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime from the Angie W. Cox Public Library located in downtown Partyville, Wisconsin. Today I am reading two stories. The first is Ocean Meets Sky, written by the Fawn Brothers. The second story is The Octopus Escapes, written by Maylee Malloy, with pictures by Felisa Sala. The theme for these stories is oceans and sea life. We picked these stories special because beginning next month we will be having a summer reading program at the library. The theme for the summer reading program is Oceans of Possibilities. There will be some fun things to do online as well as in person at the library. Make sure to stop by um, for more information or if you want to pick up the craft that goes along with these stories. There are limited supplies, so don't be late. We hope you enjoy the ocean stories. Please subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our videos. Our first story is Ocean Meets Sky by the Fawn Brothers, Terry and Eric. Finn lived by the sea, and the sea lived by him. It's a good day for sailing, his grandfather would have said. Finn remembered Grandpa's voice, telling him stories about a place far away where ocean meets sky. His grandfather would have been 90 years old today. To honor him, Finn built a boat, a boat fit for a long journey. One they had planned together. Boat building was hard work. Finn took a short nap below decks. When he awoke, he felt the boat rocking gently beneath him. The journey had begun. I didn't think the open sea would feel so lonely, Finn said after some time. This caught the attention of a great golden fish. Do you know where ocean meets sky, Finn asked the fish. It's high and low and as deep as the sea, the fish answered in a voice that made Finn's boat shake. It's up and down and very far. I can show you the way. He followed the golden fish to the library islands where a hundred bookish birds were roosting. And they explored an island of giant shells and crossed a sea of moon jellies dancing. But then Finn's eyes filled with wonder had he finally reached the place of his grandfather's stories? The magical place where ocean meets sky? His boat began to lift from the water. Or had the water fallen away? The golden fish swam towards the moon. Finn followed. He wanted to say goodbye. He had so many questions, but he heard a voice calling to him from far away. Finn? Finn, wake up. It's time for dinner, said his mother. I made Grandpa's dumplings. Finn looked out across the sea to that magical place far away where ocean meets sky. It had been a good day for sailing. Our next story is The Octopus Escapes by Maylee Malloy. Pictures by Felicita Sala. The octopus was happy in his cave. He watched the world go by outside. Bright fish darted by, some in schools and some alone. He could see starfish from his door and shiny mussels. Sometimes waves came rolling in, little shivery ones or big tumbling ones. The waves left sand on his floor, so he swept it out. 
Sometimes crabs came in. He liked to chase them for dinner. One day, something new came into his cave. He wrestled with it and pulled it free. It was empty, so he climbed inside to hide. But that was a mistake. Then he was in a glass house that wasn't a cave. The glass house was in a big room where a human peered in at him. Behind her, there were sad gray sharks and slow sea stars in glass houses of their own. The human said he's shy and gave him tests that looked like toys. Sometimes the tests were hard and he felt smart, but sometimes they were easy. The human taught him to take pictures of the people who came to see him. People love to be in pictures. They made funny faces. But every day was the same in the glass house. The food came at the same time. It always tasted the same and he didn't have to chase it. There were no waves, no little shivery ones, no big tumbling ones. He missed the different fish swimming by his cave and the starfish and the shiny mussels. He missed warm spots in cold water and cold spots in warm. He hadn't known how nice that was until it was gone. He tried to tell the human he was bored. He tried to show her how small the tank was, but she only left and peeled his tentacles off her arms. One by one, by one by one by one by one by one by one. That was when he knew he had to go. He waited for night to come. The same old dinner plopped into the same still water. The sleepy sharks cruised back and forth and the slow sea stars dozed. The lights went out and it was time. He took one more picture so they wouldn't worry. Then he slid down the glass and across the floor. He made himself flat and squeezed beneath the door. Outside, the pier was noisy and bright, but he smelled the salt of the ocean close by. He reached way, way, way down until he felt the spray and dropped. He changed colors three times in the water just because he could. It was a long swim back to his cave. The ocean was warm and cold and shivery and tumbling. He had to dive away from boats and he got very hungry. But he thought of the same food plopping into the tank and the same unchanging water and the four glass walls he couldn't swim through. And he kept on until he saw starfish and mussels he knew. At last, he found his cave. He chased a crab and brought it home for dinner, but there was sand on his floor and there were fish sleeping in his bed. He swept them out, out! He made his cave just right. No one gave him tests or wanted a picture taken. He was home and he could do what he wanted. And so he settled in to watch the world swim by. Thank you again for listening to our stories. Don't forget to stop in the library for the corresponding craft or just to say hi.